See what's, what's behind me? Yeah, the Lodestar's back. You guys have been asking about it. Where's the Lodestar? Where's the Lodestar? Oh, or what? I had one guy say, uh, oh, you guys blew your tranny, your Lodestar? He's like, no. He's like, oh, I thought that's why you weren't driving it. So, no. For those of you that have followed the build, we put a new P-pump on it, and then, I don't know, life happened. A lot, a lot of things have happened since the last one. We've just been super busy, um, had family stuff. So, but we're like, okay, we need to get this thing going because it's not gonna take that much, it's just time. And we're kinda, you know, we're not, we're not cut up on the farm at all. But we're like, okay, we just need to make time because obviously it's never gonna slow down. So here we are making time to get the load start going. Uh, last, probably last thing you guys saw was got the pump installed and then nothing. But uh, come to find out this little fitting back here is for the oil feed. And uh, turns out you can't get that fitting on there with the pump on. So we had to take it off and then got that fitting on and then we'll be putting this bad boy on which I don't know honestly probably should just tighten it on there while it's off and then we can just give her the old reach around and it goes to it'll go onto this right here like so but yeah honestly we might just attach this all together while it's off because I have a feeling it's going to be very tight to get it on while the pump's on. So yeah, we're going to throw that on real fast, then throw the pump back on, and then we'll be back to where we started. Um, we actually got our injectors cleaned and flow tested. These are just, we're just going to use the stock injectors because we're not going to, yeah, we're not going too crazy with power. And so everyone we... Everyone that we talked to said that the stock injector should be fine. So we'll see where they will get us. Then we're gonna be using the stock fuel rails, fuel lines, and then we have new um, fuel return line. This goes between each injector and then back to the, the fuel tank. So yeah, really it shouldn't take that much to get going. It's just making the time. So here we are making the time. So let's throw that line on and we can put the pump back on. All right, guys, here we are back working on the truck. I'm a little sick, so sorry if I sound like a, a more manly man than I am, but. No. Like we, <laughs> so the other night we got the injection pump back on, oil line hooked up. Remember that was the only reason we had to take it off. And then Ryan is working on getting the injectors in. And we got new seals. These are the old ones, kind of old and nasty. <gasps> you got a popsicle? So we got some new ones, new injector or return line hose that we'll throw on. So while Ryan's doing the injectors, I'm actually going to go under the truck and finish up if I remember where I mounted it. Well, there's the bolts for it. Somewhere there, up there is the fuel pump. So I need to take that off, um, put the O-rings and the filter in it, and then put it back on. Got some fittings. Need to go pick up half inch fuel line. But if I can get that hooked up, and then we'll just have to run. So I've got the fuel pump like hooked up for good, then it'll just be a matter of just running lines when we get it. Um, but yeah, once we get the injectors in, and then we can put the intake manifold on, then we can put the fuel lines, the hard lines on. Um, really not that far from starting it. And then of course, throwing the gear on. 
which this is the we got the adapter from cars and stoffer so that won't be very hard uh, we might call might call a buddy and have him come help us kind of put the gear actually on and where to set timing we know that the pump is pinned at 18 degrees and so if we set the crank to zero that will be 18 degrees of timing and so and then anything on top of that will add timing to the fuel pump so i don't really know how aggressive we want to go with this yet just because i have no idea what is too much or too little or because we want it to be a daily driver still we don't want to be having to spray ether in there every time we want to start it because the advance is so so much so we need to just talk to someone that knows what they're doing and can say hey 22 degrees is good or maybe that's too much so i don't know things we need to figure out but we just want to knock a bunch of things out we actually have another parade that we're trying to shoot for if we just have parades all the time this thing would be running it seems like every time we're, we want to get it going it's for a parade but no once we get it running now it should be stay running forever because we want to drive this thing actually so i'm going to work on the fuel pump ryan got some injectors and we just knock these things out Well, I guess I should give you guys an update of where we're at. The other night, didn't get a whole lot done. Mainly just drained the fuel out of the tank. Um, and then Ryan, Ryan put the injectors in and put the fuel lines on. So, but as you can see, we have fuel lines hooked up, at least everything but here. This line comes from the pump and it goes into the filter, then through the filter into the pump. So, and then we have the manifold on. That was really tight. It's literally just like a perfect fit in there. Probably should have done a hair more shaving, but we got it in and it's in, so it's not coming out. So yeah, right now we're actually putting on the hard lines. So obviously these line up because they're from this engine, but these ones, are a little separated apart they're a little wider on this injection pump than the old one so I think we're going to put them on the injectors just because we know they'll fit good there and then we can kind of bend them a little bit and I don't they don't have to move that much just a little bit to make them fit onto the injection pump and that should be done and really finish hooking up the fuel lines. I guess I can show you the setup down here. So here we have our PPE fuel pump that is hooked, will be hooked up there. Fuel goes in, goes out to the engine. And here we have our um, fast re fuel regulator goes in here from the engine then out to the tank and obviously this is where you adjust it the P pump calls for I believe I've read 35 psi that way it is continuously getting all the fuel that it needs so we'll adjust that once we get everything hooked up but we're getting pretty close lots to do still but we're getting close so we have the injectors on and then you can kind of see this is where they naturally want to sit. Not kind of just a little more forward than this pump, but the spacing is pretty close to the same. So we just undid a couple of the clamps, loosened this one here, then took this one off. That way that'll give us enough wiggle room with all of them. 
that we should be able to just kind of slide them back barely bending the lines but not doing anything severe so it won't affect flow or anything but it'll definitely work well we out here again after dinner we're now drilling drilling the holes for the radiator you remember I welded on these brackets that we will be um, drilling through and just putting bolts through because we had to move the radiator back closer to the engine so that we could fit the intercooler there um, and we had a little bit of struggle getting her back in but got her in um, then we're kind of planning tonight on kind of getting all the fabrication done so that way tomorrow there's a few things we need to pick up still but we'll be able to kind of just throw everything together after that instead of having to fabricate more i'm sure we'll find things that we need to do but hopefully get the majority of it done so yeah that's what we're working on right now and then i'm going to be figuring out intercooler piping and then we have a new coolant gauge that i'm going to be throwing in just because the one we had we don't know how accurate it was it was kind of cheaper one so i got a little nicer one that we can use and then yeah just moving along hopefully we can start this truck tomorrow While you're trying to move, and I always try to like move the camera. But I end up moving this. <laughs> yeah, I always like move the screen. And I'm like trying, and I'm like, oh, I have to move this. To... <laughs> well, guys, we uh, screwed up pretty, pretty good here. So, and we're on a roll. That's what's frustrating. As you can see, we, intercooler piping is made up fuel lines are all butt hooked up so we're getting to the point where we're actually installing the gear onto the p pump and and we thought that this little pin here which times the pump so when you get a pump rebuilt they will set the pump at a degree of timing which ours was set at 18 degrees by Seth Farrell. And then there's this pin that holds it there during install. And then once you have it installed, you take the pin and you actually reverse it like that, put it back on, and then you're able to start the engine. So us being naive, thought that that pin meant that the pump couldn't move it was kind of just jammed in there and and the purpose of it was also so you can torque down this nut here so we torque down which is the adapter so we torque that down got to like 48 foot pounds all of a sudden felt the torque wrench drop and so as you can see broke the pin Son of a biscuit. And which means there's a piece of plastic stuck in there, which we'll get the scope here. Brian wants to take the camera. Take the handy dandy colonoscopy scanner. And somewhere, where was it? That's it right there. Where? Oh, right there. So that white thing right there, we can get the camera to, there we go. So that white piece right there is the plastic. So we're gonna try and fish it out so that we don't have to 
take this pump apart to get it. And then we get to figure out how to, and then we get to figure out how to retime the pump, which is really unfortunate. So I guess let's see if we can get this plastic piece out and then we can see if we can get the pump timed. So, so we got our double stick tape that we taped on the end of the camera. So hopefully we can just touch it down on it. This will be our first attempt. Come on. My problem is, I think it's down in the oil. Oh, it is. So it. It's not. St it's. I wonder if we can kind of move it though. It's all oily. Yeah. Sticky. So it's got oil in there, so we can't grab it. So, first attempt was a fail. It's like Sandlot. Have you ever seen Sandlot when they're trying to retrieve the ball from, from Hercules? It'll happen. It'll happen. See what he's got first before we... So, you can kind of see it right there on the camera. I don't know if you'll be able to see it with the GoPro. But, so, it's down there. Um, so we're trying to see if we can get a piece of wire or something and kind of fish it out somehow. I don't know. Alright, we think we have the thing that'll work. Oh, look at that. Now stick it under your pillow and then and the, the tooth fairy will come. The, the timing lock pin fairy will come and time our pump for us. Yeah. Well, Got it. I guess first crisis averted. Now we need to find someone who can retime our pump in 12 hours. Got it. We got it. So I guess we will do some research and see if we will either be taking this pump off or if someone can do it with it on the truck. Um, hopefully they can do it with on the truck. That would be nice. But I guess we'll see and you guys will find out here shortly.